Hi everyone, this is Luke Hyang there from RealTX Lite. In this video, I'm gonna cover uh, the way I built this entire scene. So this is gonna be a long format detailed video. This is gonna be a step by step guide. So it cannot be short, okay? Because we're gonna cover uh, the modeling, texturing, rendering, lighting, and then we're gonna compose the whole scene in After Effects. And like there's so many stuff that's happening inside that category, okay? so. It's going to be a very long video, but I want to mention uh, one thing first. It's like a disclaimer. So this is not a professional way of doing it. Okay. It's going to be the, like there are so many tools that I use it um, in a way that it just makes the work quicker. Maybe the wrong way, but still, as long as the final looks is good, then I don't care too much about the way I did it. Okay. So we keeping that in mind, then we're going to jump straight to the video without any wasting more time. Even if this is your first time ever opening After Effects, don't worry too much about it because I'm going to cover uh, just the things that you need to know, okay? Um, the first thing is obviously we need to take the footage, uh, which is this one. I'm going to give you this footage. I will leave it in the description so you can just uh, download that one and then follow along, okay? Just drag it and then put it here. So just one thing, make sure you're in this project, okay? If it's inside the effects, then it's not possible to drag and drop it, okay? It's not possible to drag and drop it. Make sure you're in this project. And then the next thing we need to do is need to grab this one, pull it right here in this component settings because in order to make any changes like uh, scale, rotate, translate, or give any effects, we need to drop it here first, okay? Let's drop it right there. So here we can see it rotate um, clockwise. I'm just gonna rotate back uh, minus 90. So the reason is simple, it cannot just cover when I uh, take it with landscape, okay? See, if I scroll till the end, see, it cuts off. That is why I take it with a uh, portrait mode, so simple. I'm just gonna move this one back a little bit. I just wanna cover the whole, uh, the whole body uh, in this view, I just, want to make sure that I don't cut out anything. So to scale the footage, just hit S, okay? So this is the same as Blender. S to scale and R to rotate. So scale it a little bit smaller maybe. I don't care too much about the feed, this one, but I need it for the size reference, okay? Um, put it up a little bit more. Let me scale it up. I don't want to cut the, the hand as well, so it's going to be 75%. Okay, now I don't cut out anything. Yeah. Now if I play it back once. So, this is how it is. She opens the door. And then she enters the room. And then right now she's searching for something else, okay? Searching for something. And then she saw it and then she walks toward it, okay? So there's a scene. But I don't wanna use the whole footage, okay? Because like, if you look at this part, it's still not yet ready, and then right there it's ready. So, oh, I was doing so fast. Right click, comp settings. Um, I wanna make sure that the start frame is at zero, okay? I'm gonna type zero, so that now we actually start from zero, okay? Because like if you look at the previous one, there's a big number uh, in the beginning, so it's not good. So I'm just gonna uh, go here. So I'm gonna trim this one. So I'm gonna cut from 140. I'm just gonna type 140 here. So I'm just gonna drag this one to the right, and then if you hit Shift, then it will snap to the cursor, okay? Shift to snap. Now I'm gonna trim this part, right click, and then trim comp to work area. Now we trim it to the right um, the right sections of the video. But once we do that now, um, the starting frame is already at 140. We don't want that. Right click, composition settings, and then I'm going back to zero. Now we again start it from zero, which is fine. And now we can already see that if you look at this one, like there's so many camera shake and rotations happening. I don't want that for this one because uh, we're gonna add uh, manual camera shake and camera rotation inside Blender. Um, I mean, there will be yeah a manual camera work, so I don't want any shake or any movement for this one. 
uh, as of right now so we need to stabilize this one okay so to stabilize your footage select um, the footage try to stabilize uh, and then just go here in the tracker click stabilize motion and then it will open new windows so this is the original footage and this is the one that uh, we put it inside the, the comp okay so don't don't worry too much about the orientation right now um, we only need the, the tracking data okay so I'm not gonna put this one too big because this is gonna take too much time if I do that I'm gonna move and place it to some place that it is gonna be easier to track right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stabilize the motion okay so I'm just gonna put it somewhere around here yeah so this will detect all the uh, movement in that footage so as you can see it when I play it back and it's it's not just the camera you know camera shake it's also the rotation that's happening and also a little bit of camera movement towards the character so we have to stabilize that one as well so to do that just click on this rotation and then we're gonna click on the scale as well so it's gonna normalize the scale as well okay just gonna make this one a little bit bigger if you make this one too big then that's gonna be really really um i mean it's just gonna take too much time okay you don't want to do that just make sure that you don't scale way too big i'm gonna put it right here okay and then let's track it forward Now it's finally done the tracking. Um, let me scroll through the timeline to see if it works. Looks like it's working. So if you look at this one, the one that we comp, there's nothing happening here. It's still shaky, right? So the reason is like we need to first uh, apply um, this data into this composition. Okay. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to hit the target here. Right now we only have one so it's very obvious that this is the layer but if you stabilize like uh, five the fifth layer okay then you have to go here and then select the fifth layer the one that you can try to stabilize and hit okay still nothing happens because we need to apply that okay just hit apply and then okay now i can close this one because like i said this is just the reference okay closed it I'm scroll it up and minimize everything now if I play it back again I don't want to set full set to half if I play it back look at this she is stabilized and it's the footage that is moving okay there we can see there's a little bit of rotation here happening as well so this is also stabilized so that's the first thing okay and then the next thing is we need to key it out this one just to preview what's happening what's gonna happen inside blender okay so to key it out the green screen go here effects and then just type um, key and then you're gonna need this key light let's drop it right here it's nothing happened because we need to pick the color that we're gonna key okay so I go here and if I just click here now it's kind of looks good but there's a better way of visualizing how um, like the best points to pick okay like there's so many uh, points that you can pick like if I pick this one then it still looks very semi-transparent if I reset this one and I pick it like different location now we can see a little bit a little bit a little bit better okay so if I go here go back to the project and then double click this one I should have not uh, closed it in the first place now but yeah it's fine now go back to the effects and set off the final render set to status okay now we can see the status of um, the comp right now the black yeah right now the black is the transparent part and this white we see right now is the opaque and the gray part is the semi-transparent okay so what we can do is we can click this one and then click on like different parts of the the footage and then here we can see exactly which part uh, gets the best key within one click now if you look at this one like everything is almost look like uh, gray meaning like everything is almost look like a trans um, semi-transparent okay and then we don't want that 
so we're gonna click around somewhere around here so this one already looks so much better because the more we see the black and then the, the better it is okay so now I'm gonna put click somewhere around here I know that for my final render I click somewhere around here maybe this part see we can see a lot more black that's not good it must be this side okay this is so much better what about this part that's not good let's try this part yeah that's good let me try once more that part let me try this part not good okay maybe that one yeah it has to be a little bit this side Okay, I'm not gonna fast forward anything, okay? Um, okay, I'm gonna, I think this is the best, uh, the best place. So once you're done with that, we can close this one, okay? Now if I see it with a final render, then this is way like super clean. It's not super clean, I mean like it's good enough for the base, okay? Now we can see here the transparent part is happening right here. So just to fix this one, you just need to go here, screen mat. And then set the clip height to something like 80. Yeah. I think I still see some of them here. So I'm gonna change it to like 70. Yeah. I'm not worried too much about the bottom part because this is not gonna be visible in a camera. And um, yeah. So this is good enough good enough. If I move it here. Okay. Now we're gonna cut out uh, the unwanted stuff. Okay. So I'm gonna cut it out from here. Click on this one, this is the rectangle tools. But see, right now we have to click the footage, okay? Let's say you don't click the footage, then you just try to make a mask, but it's not gonna create a mask. Instead, it's gonna create a shape layer, okay? So make sure you select the footage. And then let's mask it out. I'm gonna use this one instead. Move here, go back, and that one, like there. Here, here. I don't need this part. I'll cut it right there. Now I still make it at half. Okay, so if it's way too slow down, then just change this resolution. Okay, now I say to half. If I move it, yeah. I know we see a lot of unwanted stuff right there, but it's fine. It's not gonna be visible. You know. If it's not gonna be visible in the camera, then you know you can just say okay, whatever. And then I'm gonna hit this time uh, time icon. This is just to key out the, the the mask, okay? So if I go here on the front, right there, I'm gonna mask it. Wait, click this one. This is select tools. Just mask it here. Put it like that. Pull this one on the side here. This one as well. Put it here. And if I look at the first frame, so many unwanted stuff in the first frame. Just gonna key this out of the thing till somewhere around here. Like I said, don't worry about this one. I'm just gonna move it up. I don't wanna see this. Put it like that, move it in. Oh, what is that? Okay, let's remove this keyframe. I don't need that. There's this one. And okay, okay, there's so many unwanted stuff. So especially right here, we can see a lot of our hand cutting off. Gonna move up here, right there. So I'm not gonna rotoscope this one out, okay? Instead, I'm just gonna cut it like this. I just pull the camera down, okay? Because I don't wanna do rotoscope, it's tedious work. Move this one on the side, just put it barely touch that. As long as it's like, looks clean, then I'm gonna keep it like that. And if you look at this one, like the way I even key out the green screen is very not professional, but it serves the purpose, you know? Move it away, it almost cut out here. So move this one a little bit here. 
This one as well. This one as well. Pull this one down, something like this. Move along. And then it still got out the hand, but let's not worry too much about it. Yeah, this is good enough for now. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna uh, increase the clip black value to like something 20. So that's gonna key out those, um, you know, those stuff that we don't want. So let's change this one to status just to see the. Here we see a green. If I change this one to like 60, see a bit lesser. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like this for now. Intermediate, change to final. Final, that's the color, but I'm gonna leave it like that, okay? So this is the key out. I know it doesn't look perfect, and I'm not looking for that, okay? So we're gonna use this one to preview um, the character movement inside Blender, okay? So once we are done with this keying, then hit Control, hit Control and M. So you can export this one out in PNG, but for this one, uh, I'm gonna use quick time, but I'm gonna go here in the format options, change this one to Apple ProRes 444 because this Apple ProRes 444, this Apple ProRes 444 can contain alpha, okay? So if you go here on the channel, RGB plus alpha. And then I'm gonna resize it, okay? Because right now this is 4K. I don't wanna preview it in 4K inside Blender, okay? Because I'm gonna uh, import this one as images plain. So I'm gonna set it to like 720p. So like I said, this is just gonna be for the previewing purpose. We don't need high quality, but we need the alpha. And then I'm gonna select the output folder. Um, dark or tutorial key. Okay, so this is the one that I record. So I'm just gonna do two for this one. Okay, what am I doing? Two. And then hit render. So, once we're done with the render, now we can open Blender. So I'm gonna start with uh, the default Blender scene, okay? Um, there is nothing, I mean, I don't activate anything here except for the screencast key, okay? So I will enable the screencast key so you can see exactly what am I doing, okay? Maybe I'm gonna increase the size. Ah, it's okay, everyone can see it, right? So I'm gonna delete this cube. Oh, actually, I'm gonna keep it, but I'm gonna edit it, okay? So right now we can see the origin is at the middle. And then if I try to scale this one, I hit S, it scaled from the middle. And I don't want that, okay? I want the origin to be right at the bottom of this face. So to do that, I'm gonna select the face here, or you can hit three, to go to the face, you can hit two. To go to the uh, vertices, hit one, okay? One, two, and three. Select the bottom, hit three, select the bottom. And then you can hit Shift S, okay? Now we're gonna move the 3D cursor to the selected face right here. Now it's select, I mean, it's exactly on the, um, the bottom face. Now what we can do is we need this origin to be on the 3D cursor, so right click, Origin, no, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now if I scale it, it scales from that bottom, okay? That's gonna be really, really handy. I'm just gonna grab G, and then hit Z, and then control, and then move it up. So this is gonna move one blender unit, okay? Meaning it's just gonna be at the origin. So I'm gonna use this one for, uh, for the base. I'm gonna uh, move it on the side, by the way. I'm not gonna use this one directly, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna need to import our reference character, okay? Which is gonna be this one. So she is, like it's written here, 1.68 meter tall, which is average size of uh, kind of female. So we're gonna use this one, select everything using A, Control C to copy this one. And then we're gonna paste it here, Control V. Now we have the reference. So I'm gonna build everything based on this reference, okay? But before that, we need to know one thing. Like right now, if I move, I mean, rotate the camera, this kinda looks good. But now if I shift it like this, 
and then if I try to move it see it's just doing really weird movement right so like if I move it away and I see the farther I move away like if I do it right there see it's really weird now so we don't want this let's first fix that one go to edit preference and then go to navigation and then just click on this depth okay so when you click on the depth then it's going to rotate from every i mean the point uh you click it when you try to rotate it okay let's see if try to rotate here then it's going to rotate it from there from the camera and from the lamp okay so that's the first thing now we're gonna build everything based on her okay uh, we're gonna build everything based on her um, this is gonna be the size of our character as well okay now we need to import the the footage that we exported from after effects okay so to do that we're gonna need to e activate one add-on go here preference and then that add-on is uh, not this one image is plain so type image here enable this one the saved it okay I'm not gonna save it because if I have to record this uh, tutorial again then I have to do it again so I'm not gonna save it now once you do that but before we import it we need to make sure the uh, frames per second the FPS match with the project settings okay click on the, the format we need to make sure it's 29.97 because this is how I capture my scene okay if you look at this one um, if I go to the project settings right click composition settings you see this is 29.97 and if I click on the footage is 29.97 so we have to match that one inside blender very very important okay 29.97 now let's import it so it will import any um, see right now if I create like plane cube circle UV sphere it's gonna always create in this 3d cursor okay if I place it right here and then I hit shift a and then if I hit cube then it's gonna create cube from there if I put it right here shift a cube it's gonna put it from there you know wherever the 3d cursor is gonna create so I want to place the 3d cursor here in the middle I mean at the origin so hit shift s and then cursor to world origin I'm gonna stay to the world origin now let's import our footage shift a image image is plain now just locate the one that um, I keyed out which is this one I know why the size is way too small but yeah it's fine click import images plain you don't have to do anything so right now the orientation is kind of looks weird but we're gonna fix that but we need to first see um, the texture first so go here and then enable the texture now we can see the texture if I look at the video she's carrying the candle with her right hand meaning the, the candle is at the left so we have to make sure that we maintain that it has to be negative Z now if I look at it from the front and I'm gonna move this one aside I'm gonna hide it hit H to hide it now I'm gonna move this one up like this so I just want to make sure that her leg touches the floor okay I'm just gonna move it down a little bit somewhere around here we can see her toe right here so we just have to make sure that this is the base now I need the origin to be right here like I said like if I just try to scale it so it's gonna scale from there we don't want that we try to scale from here to do that right click origin to 3d cursor okay I'm gonna scale this one up I'm gonna roughly match the height with our character reference okay good so that's the first thing now we're gonna build I mean before we build the the entire scene uh, we have to make sure the camera angle is right okay so I'm gonna use this camera uh, go to the front view hit control alt and zero this will snap the view to the view that I'm currently in okay so I'm gonna adjust the layout a little bit so that we can see a little bit more easier I'm gonna change this one to 3d viewport change this one to outliner I'm gonna move it down a little bit here 
hit zero. I'm gonna move it back. Yeah. Like this. Um, we can't see the texture here because we need to enable um, in this windows as well. Okay, so let's click on this drop down, go to texture. Now we can see the texture. Um, but right now it's 1920 1080p. So, you know, I just have to go manually here and then the printer icon, go to format and then change this one to like NF24 because I, um, I don't want to render that extra bar, you know, it's going to be black bar right here. So I don't want to render that once out because it's not going to be visible anyway. So I just want to get rid of that. Okay. I will disable everything here just to make it cleaner. There's the first thing. Yeah. Now, if I, oh, by the way, I almost forget. Um, I need another window, another window. And then I'm gonna take the timeline as well, okay? So I'm gonna move this one, drop it down a little bit more. Something like this. Okay, cool. And also, if you look at the uh, After Effects file, right click and then Compose Settings. The length is 445, so we have to match this one as well. Go here. So this is 445. Okay. It's pretty long, I know. Now, if I scroll the timeline, look at this one. Yeah, I mean, the height looks the same, but when I scroll the timeline, now it's become way, way too big, right? So this is because... Uh, it's just moving forward, okay? But if you look at it from here, then it's just moving up. But we can use this one as our advantage, okay? Because, look at this one. So we know, like at the first frame, we know that her feet and the top of her head are the same height, right? So if we can match, if I hit shift and right arrow, if we can match this height from the camera view, then that's gonna mean that she's walking uh, this that much distance in 3D space, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna click on the female character, right click, and then select hierarchy. And I'm gonna move this one separately. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm doing it so fast again. I hit M and then I click on this new collection, okay? So I'm just going to rename this one as reference, reference character. And yeah, this is the reference character. I matched the first frame. Now if I go to the last frame and then I'm trying to match this one again, okay? But first I'm going to show you the, the wrong way of doing it. So I put the, the, the skeleton here in different layers because it's very annoying to see the skeleton always okay so I just put it right there now if I move it up and then now we can see that um, even though we matched the height then now it's no longer matched the, the yeah hard fit so this is because uh, we need to match the camera angle first okay so to do that I'm going back to the first frame and then I'm gonna use constraint okay click on the camera and then click on this object constraint and just on top of the camera click this one and then track two so we need an object that um, this camera is gonna track okay so we're gonna use empty for that empty and you can use any of them so I'm just gonna use sphere for now let's get it smaller now if I track this camera to that empty which is this one it's moving down but we can just lift it up again somewhere around here just make sure the height is still the same yeah still the same and even the fit still the same so now even if i move this one up or down then i know that this fit i mean the height of these two characters is still gonna same now i just have to match the front okay now i go to the last frame 
and I also move this one but before that let me go back to the first frame before that we need to key this one okay I and then location and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to the last frame shift and right arrow now we can move this one okay we can't scale this one because the scale is the one that needs to maintain and we need to move I mean we need to change the location and then if we can match the height then meaning uh, we match the, the camera angles and we calculate the distance that she is walking in 3d space okay so right now if I move it like that we can clearly see that we have to move a little bit on the bottom so I'm just gonna move this one back a little bit right there yeah now I can just move this one up 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 and just move it closer gonna move it up somewhere around here okay fine now if you look at the feet the feet is also matching so if you can't match this one just make sure you match the first frame and then go back to the uh, last frame and then you can just move this one up and down okay or maybe you can move it back a little bit more and then up and down okay so that's how I match the camera angles so I'm just gonna key this one as well I location so now we can calculate that C is moving this long I mean yeah this distance is covering like almost uh, this distance which is fine okay now we we're done with the camera angles and it's really easy to move the the camera uh, by accident so I'm gonna key the camera as well on the first frame shift left arrow I and then location okay I key it out yeah I add a keyframe in the first location and we don't need this one I'm gonna change this one to materials real quick but for now let's just leave it like that so this is the reference character and this is the main character move to the frame collection this is gonna be main character what is this main character okay but um, this one problem right here if I hide the camera this is a cube this cube is just the assets this is the camera I'm gonna pull the camera out but this one I'm gonna rename it as light what is that yeah like that this camera so this one is the cube I'm gonna rename this one as asset cube assets okay cool this camera I'm gonna hide the camera for now and see it's really annoying to see this bone I can hide it but if I hide it it only hides that bone okay so I, when I do alt H then it's gonna come back with all the things that I hide so it's really annoying so that is why I just click on the bone and go here that looks like a running guy click different layers okay now we are get it off that cube move it to the side a little bit and the problem that I'm saying here is like if you look at this one and then I have like a cube right here shift a cube move it back scale it smaller now if I try to click the cube then first it's gonna select this one always always even if I'm right here try to select it still gonna select this one so it's really annoying so in order to get rid of that I'm just gonna hit shift and H to isolate that one I'm gonna hit right I mean shift ah, I'm gonna hit tap yeah tap and then I'm gonna close that one I'm gonna find where she occupy the, the space most so okay that's the farthest length she occupied so I'm gonna hit control R to add loop cut here slide it so that we don't cross that so if I look at on the right side see it's covering looks like yeah right here looks like this is a point okay exactly right here control R I'm gonna cut it out right here select these four vertices X vertices the reason why I'm doing that is now we have like a very lesser amount of space that we can accidentally select this one 
so this is gonna be a little bit uh, efficient okay so hit alt h to, uh, to unhide everything now if I try to hide this from here from here yeah but you get a point right let's just make it a little bit smaller um let go back to first frame yeah this is the correct there okay now let's build the entire house okay so let's start with the building i'm gonna take this cube because this is the one that i already scale um i mean already get the, the origin right so shift d shift d and make sure your origin is i mean yeah 3d cursor is at the origin if it doesn't if it's somewhere around here then just hit shift s and then cursor to word origin world origin world origin oh, yeah. now click on the cube and then shift s again now selection to cursor now it's going it's just gonna snap right there now this is gonna be the interior scene so i'm just gonna scale it up a little bit higher somewhere around here scale but z oh hit s and then shift z to scale it in all direction but z axis okay i'm just gonna scale it up and then i'm gonna move it on the front a little bit more still a bit small scale it up yeah like that i think the back is a little bit um too white so yeah i'm gonna put it like that but see i don't wanna see the whole stuff okay meaning i don't wanna uh see the full body here okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna increase the length the lens okay to something a bit like this because the wider we see then the the more work that we need to do okay so i'm just gonna increase the, the focal length and the size is still gonna look the same okay so it's still gonna look the same maybe a little bit different but it's not gonna be a drastic change but here we can't see the face so i'm just gonna shift it along y i mean yeah like this yeah something like this is fine yeah so that i don't have to you know um make a lot of modeling and yeah distributing the assets okay now this is fine let's build it go to the first frame now i'm gonna um open this part right here for the door okay so i'm going back let's enable extra shading pi menu go to preference and then go to key map and then enable extra pi shading uh, extra shading pi menu okay uh, the reason why i did that is because if you hit z then we see more options right here okay now i don't want to see the top okay the ceiling so hit tab and then go to face mode select the top b and then selection okay we, i'm just separating this top face from uh, from the cube okay so p is a shortcut and for this one i'm gonna make it unselectable okay so I'll just click on this filter and then if i scroll it up i'm gonna click on this one plus this one yeah if i click on this one then i'll not be able to select it anymore and before i did that i'm gonna go to here object properties go down here in the display viewport display and then change the display type to bounce okay so when i render this one out and it's still gonna take into account but uh, we're not gonna see that face that hides everything okay so i'm gonna put this one no this one and this one inside the collection hit m collection this is gonna be i'm just call it um scene Now everything will be inside this one. No, what am I doing? This one is fine. Okay, I can't select this one. Just move it this one as well. Cube assets. What is this? Oh, these are cube assets. This is the one. Okay. I wanna leave it here. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this one outside. Now 
we're gonna create a door right here but instead of manually creating a door right here what we can do is we can go to bridge here and you can type this old wooden door okay if you click on this one old wooden door and then you export it now this one will export to blender okay if i hit export export to blender let's open our blend file so this is the file but looks like this is way too big for our scene okay we either increase the the character or make it smaller so for this one i'm gonna make it smaller okay i'm gonna move it on the front way front here because if you look at the footage here she's not entered the room yet look at the light and then she's open it and then she enters the room so we have to leave some space for that she's stepping one step and then almost at the second so we're gonna leave a uh, space for that one it's gonna be somewhere around here okay she needs to open it from here okay now i'm just gonna scale it down a little bit here yeah and i think i'm gonna um change the lens back to like something like yeah 70 let's say it's like 70 is fine i'm gonna get rid of this big chunk okay i don't need this one so i'm just hit tab to go to edit mode and then hit one to go to the uh, vertices mode i'm just gonna click on one of the face here go down go down go down hit control and click on this one so you'll just find the shortest path to that one and then we're gonna click on that i'm gonna click on this one as well i'm just gonna hit h to hide that that's looking really weird but don't worry about it click on this one click on that going to the bottom click this one and then hit h again so now we separate that part it's really good now hit l to select this part like the whole loop make sure we if like if any of the the face are connected then it's gonna select the whole loop okay so that's why i cut out that part first and then hit x now delete the vertices if you hit alt h then we're gonna get that sharp you know with a sharp border and everything okay so since it's gonna open this door then we have to uh, select i mean uh, extract all these doors and then make a duplicate of it and also one thing i'm gonna flip this one s x minus one okay so this one flips the whole uh, the whole thing because i want her to open this uh, the bigger window okay since it's gonna open it so we have to separate this one hit tab and then we have to trace that um, i'm gonna select this part again go all the way here select that go down 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 select this part go all the way down and select this part as well yeah looks really good and then um i'm gonna select this part select this part as well control and i'm just gonna hide it i just want to make sure that nothing is connected there anymore so hit l to select this entire door and then hit alt h to get that uh, the edges back before you duplicate it make sure you hit p and then hit selection so we separate this one out first okay before we made any duplication now select everything s wait wait select everything shift d first make a duplicate of it and then s y minus one so i just flip it on the other side okay and then i'm just gonna grab this one long y right there like this maybe i have to move it a bit more 
grab y g i hit g and then i just move it along y yeah i'm just gonna hide this one for now i'm gonna do the same here as well um i'm gonna select this part go down i'm gonna select control and select it okay so that it will calculate the short path and it's gonna select it for you now what if you try to like hit control and just click on this one then it's gonna start from from there okay from the active uh, selection so you, you need to hit shift first to get this one to a new selection first and then we can trace it from there okay control now it trace from there I'm just gonna move it down click this part I'm just gonna hide it now I'm gonna select this whole loop and then alt H to get that edge back P and then selection okay make sure you select this one first and then now go to edit mode select everything shift D to duplicate it see I duplicate it and then scale Y negative one to flip it on the other side okay so see we need to move it a little bit on the Y axis so just hit G Y go along Y and I'm gonna just leave it right there cool I'm not worried too much about like connecting this part this face if you want you can do it it's really easy but I'm not care too much about it I'm just care about this part because this is the part that visible on the camera so let hit shift and H to isolate this part so if you think like um, this one the way it looks is really annoying then you can scroll this one up change this from timeline to shader editor and then just click on this one. Oh, it's not working so go to edits preference and then go to add-on then type node wrangler add-on this one save it so you don't have to do it over and over again now if we click here control shift and click it then we don't see that blue thing anymore okay really annoying now i'm going to close this part i hit alt and select to uh, select the whole loop okay alt and left click and then here alt and shift left click okay now in order to connect these two together you just have to uh, press f3 and then just type bridge and then this is going to bridge those two together oh what happened let me select the face two okay we have this one we don't need this we don't need that so i'm going to do it again f2 f3 and then bridged yeah even though it doesn't look good but let's leave it like this for now so i can't leave it like this it's way looking so bad go to geometry data here in this object data properties okay and then clear this clear custom split normal okay then it's gonna looks much better okay now i'm gonna hit alt h to take everything back i'm gonna do the same here as well so shift h to isolate it i'm gonna close this loop as well so i'm gonna go to the face i'm in the add selection mode Alt and click this one Alt shift and click this loop F3 and then bridge edge loop and now we face the same problem right here look at the normal problems so just clear this one go to the uh, object data properties and clear it now we're good I know there's a hole right here if you want to fix it what you can do is go to the edge mode any of them is just Alt and left click and Alt and left click shift shift Alt and left click okay on the other side hit F3 and then bridge it so you can bridge it like this the whole thing but I'm not worried about it because it's not gonna be visible anyway so now if I try to rotate it R see it looks really weird so I have to rotate it along Z okay hit Z and then if I rotate see it the rotation like the pivot point is not right right so in order to fix this one I'm gonna hit shift H again to isolate it 
and then I go to uh, edit mode. Um, I think we need to fill this part as well, but yeah, it's okay. I want to rotate it in uh, from the middle of this face, right here on this face. So to select this face, hit Alt and left click. Now we select the whole loop here. Now, now hit Shift and S, and then cursor to select it. Now it will um, snap the cursor to exactly on the face. Right click, and then set origin, origin to 3D. Now we can rotate it. First, I'm gonna Alt Height, and now I can rotate rotate it in this angle. Right, I mean R and then Z. Now we can rotate it at this point, which is good. Okay, now we have the window, which is really good. I just want to move this one, everything back. Okay, move everything back to right here. But now we can't see the character, so we need to cut this one out. So we can use Boolean or we can use loop cut. So I'm just going to use loop cut for this one. It's not that of problem. I hit Control R, okay, to add loop cut. Control B, and then I'm just gonna move it like that. Okay, I need to move it a little bit more. So I'm just gonna hit S and then X. I scaled along X. Let me do it again. S X. Ah, oh, why well, it's not working? Median. S. X. Oh, it's working, but it's just very subtle. So S X. I'm gonna move it somewhere around here. If I go closer. Okay, I need to add um, a loop cut right here as well for this one. I'm just gonna hit Shift and H to isolate it again. Then move it down. Right here, we can see this part. It's, it doesn't look good, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to select the, f uh, the first face. I'm just going to hide it. Go to vertices mode, okay? And then hide it. Now I'm going to select the bottom. Actually, I don't have to select it. So hit L and then Alt-H to, to bring back that face. But if I delete these vertices, then it's going to delete this one too. I don't want that, so I'm just going to... Hit B and then middle mouse button to deselect that part. X vertices. Now we get rid of that. Now we need to select this face loop and then hit E and then Y. Okay. You can move this one outside. And here we save, I uh, mean, we see the same problems, normal. So I'll just click on clear again. We can see it here. Okay. Now if I hit Alt H to bring back to bring back everything. Okay, now this is fine. I'm gonna select these ads. I go to the edge mode, okay? Hit G twice. I just wanna move it slightly here. And then select. I hit Alt, okay, to select I select this whole loop. You can't just select this one, expect to work, okay? Select the whole loop using Alt, G twice. Move it back somewhere around here. I have to do it from the top as well. Control R. I'm just gonna move it. So control R is to add loop cut. I'm gonna cut this one out, hit the face, add X, and then face. Okay. So this will delete the face. Now we have the window. Right now it's still looking very empty, right? And this room is a bit wider than I expected. So I'm just going to narrow it down a little bit more here to somewhere around here. I don't want to go that wide, but on the other side, it's fine. Okay. I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to click this one, shift D and move it here inside the scene, scale, shift Z. So it doesn't scale long Z. Get smaller, put it on the side. Let's put it this way instead of the right side. Put it right there. 
I still want to scale it smaller. So scale, but Z, shift Z, I mean shift Z, okay. When I say but Z, I mean shift Z. Yeah, I'm gonna scale Z. Now we have to scale it upward like this. And so this is just to add a bit more detail to the scene, okay? Right now it's just looking so flat and I don't like that. Maybe I move this one a bit too far. I'm gonna move it back a little bit. Somewhere around here is fine. Then move this one, just put it right there. So I'm gonna put another one on the top here as well. Shift D. Now I have to rotate this one along Y, R, Y, and then 90. Okay, but this time it has to be negative. Enter. I'm just gonna move it up. I just want to put it exactly right here. I'm going to scale this one along X like that. Just fine. Okay. Now we can barely see what's happening right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. Just drop down shading. Enable the outline plus the cavity. Okay. Now we can see a bit more clear right here. So for this one, I don't want to uh, like intersect it exactly at the same phase okay just move it this one back a little bit more to be the same um, extrusion as this one yeah like that move it back a little bit yeah and after this one I'm gonna select this one by the way I'm gonna add a loop cut right here control R like the one we did for the bottom, you know, this part. Control R. Move it here. Move, select the loop. Move it right here. Maybe move it a little bit right here. Now I'm going to duplicate this one. Shift D, move it down. So again, this is just for the, the decoration, okay? But adding these like small small details add up really really um huge when it comes to the final render okay so i'm just gonna delete that part and then i think um this a bit okay i'm just gonna move this one shift d on the right somewhere around here somewhere around here is fine i'll scale this one along z and just make it exactly right here. Yep. I'm gonna move it on the other side as well. Shift D, X, move it right here. Do that. Yeah. I'm just gonna grab, put it right there. And yeah, we have that. Right now it's still looking very, very empty, right? Because he needs to enter the room and then. You know it's gonna be very empty so I'm gonna create a little bit of uh, stuff around so let's start with um, this one uh, the one that I have right now like this one so this is looking like a bar okay like a medieval bar so I'm gonna add this one and again this is just the cube okay nothing complex I'm gonna take the cube the assets cube but I always duplicate this one okay because this one already has like I said uh, the right origin scale Z and then just scale it like this much if I look it from the front I think this one I'm gonna duplicate the, the back face as well and then hit P selection now I separate this one okay separate this one and then I'm also gonna change this one to viewport, display, bounce, okay? Go here, object, data properties, viewport, and then bounce, okay? So that we can, see, if I see it from the front, then I can see exactly uh, the size. Right now, it's, we can see way too small. Scale, Z has to be around this tall. Yeah, it's gonna be around this tall, okay? I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna move this one a little bit back. 
look at from the top should be something like this let's see walks let's make sure yeah okay so see walks up until here now I'm gonna add loop cut right here hit tab control R control R yeah now I'm gonna delete this face one select this face X vertices and I don't need the bottom as well so I just hit X vertices since it's not gonna visible this one again so I'm not gonna bother it select this loop I'm gonna move this one here a little bit because now I feel like it's too white so it'll be too white this part is fine because like I said it's not gonna be visible so let's not care too much about it and then I need something else right now it still looks very flat you know it's just two of them so I'm gonna take the cube as well again I take the cube again shift D and then I'm going here inside this one and then shift and right click okay now shift s make sure you select the cube okay and shift s and then if you click on this selection to cursor then it will just snap it right there okay I can scale this one smaller maybe this size okay move it right here Yeah, scale it along Z, a bit smaller. Yeah, now I'm gonna start extruding this one just to give a bit more detail. Okay, go to three, go to the face mode here. I'm gonna pull my previous one as a reference. I just wanna see how I extrude it. Okay, okay, I make this one a little bit smaller. Now I hit E to extrude. Okay. And then S to scale, E and S. I'm gonna use this one a lot. And then E, and then E, and then S. You can just hit I, okay? So for this one, to insert the face. But you cannot hit I to extrude it, okay? You can only hit I to in insert like this. Creating another face inside it, okay? So, for this one, I'm gonna hit E again, but I'm gonna scale it up to something like this. Hit another E up. E S E E S to be this small. I think this one is a bit too big. Yeah, it's a bit too big. Hit Control Plus just to increment uh, increase the selection. Nope. Yeah. Hit S, Shift S. No. Hit S, Shift Z. Select this one smaller because I feel like I need to increase this one up a little bit more. Something like this is fine. Select the whole face and I'm just gonna hit E. Do it out. So this is like I said. This is just to add a bit more detail because uh, the more detail you add to the scene, then you know. Uh, the the more realistic that it becomes okay plus control plus I hit control plus and then I'm gonna just hit shift D and then move it up and I'm gonna hit S Z minus one to flip that one uh, in Z space okay I'm just gonna hit this loop alt I hit alt and then left click okay first I'm gonna delete this face hit three like this face first X face okay we need to remove the face first before we uh, bridge um, the edges okay so like this to loop shift alt and then left click now hit F3 and then bridge as loop we can delete this one control X but make sure you're in the edge mode okay so this is another detail come on where are we okay Good enough. Maybe I want to increase the height a little bit more. So I'm going to hit increment the selection, move it up, something like this is fine. Okay, 
I'm just gonna hit duplicate, shift D, and then move it on, this, on the front, put it right there. Okay, let's see, so it's gonna walk in, and then it's gonna look around. Okay, that's good. And then if you look at this one, it just look like a cube, right? So we're gonna make some changes on this one as well. Go to the face mode. I mean, go to the ads mode, okay? Control R, and then just pull this one up, something like this. Yeah, that's fine. Now I'm gonna in, um, extrude this one inside. So uh, to do that, go. Let's go to the face mode. So then, yeah, we can click Alt E along normal. Yeah. Now let's select the whole loop on this one, and then go to the uh, vertices mode X, and then hit. I mean, delete the vertices. I'm gonna straight this one. S X zero. Wait, what happened? S Y zero. Then it's gonna straighten that one. Okay. I don't care about this part. If this this part is fine, this part as well. S X and then zero. That will straighten up this part. So I'm gonna select this loop and then maybe I wanna pull this one down a little bit like this. So that it doesn't look like completely flat, okay? Yeah. Control R, I'm just gonna, oh, make sure we don't have this one selected anymore. I'm gonna grab it, put it up right like this, and I'm gonna hit Control R, scroll your mouse, uh, mouse wheel, okay? And then I'm gonna put it like that. Now Control B again. Now this is just to add like a little bit more uh, detail. I'm gonna select this loop and then I'm just gonna hit S to get it yeah, like this, which is fine. So it just adds, you know, like a little bit more detail. Okay, now what? So now we are done with that part. Uh, I feel like right now this part is a bit too empty, so I'm gonna add a table, okay? So I'm gonna delete, not delete, I'm gonna use this one, duplicate this one again. So shift and right click on like this floor, shift right click, now shift S and then select center cursor, okay? Let's move it down, let's look it from the front. The height is gonna be roughly matched with her knee, like this part, okay? And then this is, oh, uh, it's gonna be the table, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger, something around like this this big like this okay now I'm gonna add a loop cut right here control R so the technique that I use is all uh, like pretty much the same okay I just hit I just use uh, control R control B to model stuff okay control R to add loop cut control B to bevel um, yeah it's pretty much the same so hit three and I'm just gonna extrude this one out like this and do the same for the other side but luckily it's not visible again, so let's not care about that. Now control R, I'm gonna add another loop cut here. And then control R, another loop cut there. Okay, now hit three, X, and then face. I'm gonna get rid of the face, this face as well, and the lower face as well. Now let's close this one, because right now it's just open. Click this. Three vertices, hit F. Do the same for this one as well. F. I'm not gonna feel that. Yeah. That's fine. Now, um, I'm gonna add a um, stool right there, okay? Because right now it still feels empty. So, just gonna model plane here. Let's get it a little bit smaller. Now I'm gonna add a uh, loop cut in the middle, control R, control R, and then hit one. I just need this face, okay? So I'm just gonna select this face, control I to invert, and then X, 
only face no it's face yeah and now i'm gonna enable the mirror modifier here where is the mirror yeah right there i'm gonna enable y as well so whatever i do here then that's gonna copy it to the the other face okay select everything e and extrude it up something like this control r control r yeah now another control r control r yeah so this is the face that i need okay so i'm gonna hit e and if i see it from the top i'm just gonna grab it and put it somewhere around here what about the height the height looks kind of small to me so move it up a little bit yeah i'm gonna leave it like this for now I hit Control R, and then it's gonna be somewhere around here. Control B, can put it like that. Yep. Now I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get rid of this part. I mean I'm gonna extrude this part. Hit E, and then just extrude this one. Wait, it looks really weird. Let me do it again. E. Yeah, it looks weird. So, hit. E and then X so it's gonna be straight but now we can see they are penetrating each other right so we need a way to uh, join each other so I'm gonna click on this clipping okay now if I pull it now they are actually joined that's what we want and I'm gonna hit um, extrude for this one as well Y now they are joined so just to add a bit more detail okay and then another thing that I model here is first I'm gonna duplicate this one shift D rotate Z 90 so yeah I put it that way as well uh, to get more a bit detail and yeah I'm gonna move this one somewhere around here okay okay so now let's add a frame right here shift A and then I'm going to use a cube for this one as well. Okay, let's just get it smaller. Let's put it right there. S, Y. Let's get it along Y and move it out. This, for this frame, I want it to be a pretty big frame. So shift, I mean S, shift Y. Scale it bigger. Put it right there. Okay, now I'm gonna add a um, loop cut. Okay, Control R, Control R, and then left click. Now I'm gonna select these two loops. So Alt and then Shift, Control B. I'm just gonna scale this one up to something like this. Now I'm gonna select just the face, the front face E, extrude in to something like this. Now I'm going to select all these side edges, select it, I'm going to select this one as well, like this and this. Now we have to go here and then check, I mean select this individual origin, okay? And then Alt E and then extrude individual face, then we can extrude it like this, to be something like this, okay? Good. And then I'm gonna prepare another um, another frame here. So I'm just gonna duplicate um, this face, Shift D. Just gonna pull it down here. But for this one, I just wanna make it a bit smaller, something like this, but longer, like that. Yeah. So what we can do is we can just hit I, get it smaller, and then select this loop, the outer loop. Hit 2 to select the edge and then E to extrude backward. It's gonna be Y, I guess. Yeah, it's Y axis. I'm gonna leave it right here. So I'm gonna deselect um, this face. I don't want to select it anymore. So I'm just gonna select the edge and pull back. Yeah, like that. 
but now they are one object okay we have to separate it so select L just loop just select this part P and then selection okay now we separate this one but the origin stays right there right click origin to geometry now we switched it on the bottom so I'm just gonna scale this one a bit smaller now I'm gonna duplicate this one shift D rotate Y 90 this time let's get it bigger to be somewhere around here yeah maybe that's a bit too much maybe ah it's fine put it right there move it up rotate along Y so it's not like perfectly hanging on the wall fine so we have this one and what else so I'm gonna model the lamp uh, the one that we see right here this two guy this is all like a very simple modeling right click here shift right click shift a and then I'm gonna use curve I mean circle for this one scale it smaller I use s to scale that one okay put it right there go to edit mode and I hit one okay and then just hit E and then extrude along Z and then I think this is way too big so I'm just gonna you know, get it smaller even this one as well just get it smaller so whenever I select the loop I use alt okay See what I did? Yeah. Scale this one. Now I'm gonna hit E and then S. So it's always E and S. E, Z, and then E, S, and then E, Z, and then E, Z once more, and then E, Z once more, and then another one E, Z. And then E, Z. So you will understand why I did this, okay? So I want to add one more loop cut right here, Control R, and then I'm just gonna scale this one up. I'm gonna select this loop and then S, scale it up like this. Control B to bevel it, something like this. Yeah. I'm gonna scale this loop, just scale it smaller. Right now, look at this, like it looks really bad, right? So I have to manipulate it. Control plus. So I'm gonna select here. Okay. First I have to select this loop because I want to scale it uh, from here. Okay. So shift S cursor to select it. Now the 3D cursor snap to this selection. Now I'm gonna select this whole loop. Yeah. Now change this one to 3D cursor. Okay. Scale along Z because previously that was like too tall. It's way too tall for me. I'm just gonna move it down as well. Like this. Maybe a bit too small. Okay. Like that. Okay, that's fine it up and then I'm gonna duplicate this part shift D and then move it on the side I don't want to set it to 3d cursor anymore set it to median point rotate Y 90 and then I'm just gonna hit F to fill that scale it up so this one this one is just to hang uh, hang it on the wall okay extrude along X yeah move it up like this Okay, now it doesn't look good, so I'm just gonna set it to shade smooth because right now you look at that, it just looks so pixelated, right? But now the normal looks really weird. So go here, uh, object data properties, go to normal, and then auto smooth, yeah, like that. But still, it doesn't look good, so I'm gonna hit control and one to add subdivision surface modifier, okay. So, but now we face this problem. So to fix this one, we need to add sharp, okay? So if you go here, uh, the subdivision, make it simple for now. Right click, 
select all the points that uh, you need to you need I mean you want it to be sharp okay select go to the edge mode don't go to the vertices mode okay because this is gonna select the unwanted um, edges select all this part I need this part to be flat and I need this and this one to be flat as well so now if I go to cat um, yeah enable a subdivision surface nothing happens because I need to uh, go to the items here if you don't see this one just hit N okay hit N and then go to the items and transform and then just increase the mean crease and then here we go it's pretty good right now this is not a magnet they cannot just you know um, hang each other like this instead I'm gonna model one more thing select this one shift s cursor to select it so it's gonna snap right there shift a curve and then I'm gonna use path okay I'm just gonna scale it smaller and then I'm gonna hit tab I'm gonna move this one up I'm gonna move this one up as well I'm gonna move this one up somewhere around here now I select this one tab I want to move it right there so shift right click shift s and then select the cursor right there I want to move this one on the side here so all these three as well cut it like that Something like that yeah that's fine now I'm just gonna extrude this one go to uh, the object data properties again go to geometry and then just um increase the depth yeah make sure they're connected so i'm just gonna move this one up a little bit put it right there same for here as well let's lift this part like that yeah i think that's cool and then yeah there's so many things so many else that needs to model but instead of modeling everything by ourselves what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here uh, to thermo squid okay and then just search this one medieval village disease and yeah i'm gonna give you a link for this uh this one in the description as well so we're gonna use this one and then populate it across the the scene i know it looks very low poly doesn't look nice at all but you know like i said it's not gonna visible to the camera in a way but if it does visible to the camera then we maybe have to subdivide this one a little bit better okay so once you download that one then they are uh, this part okay this 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 one this one and this one as well all this stuff has come with that that model okay really really good so i just distribute all this part sometimes i hang it on the wall i'm not gonna remodel this one because um i turn it off in the final render this one so it's not visible to the camera again so i'm not gonna do that so i'm just gonna quickly copy all this stuff yeah because i don't want to redo it this part okay here select it select it make sure i don't select this face and i'm just gonna hit ctrl c so just import i uh, mean just download this one okay download this one and then go file import fpx okay and then locate that file then when you import it then it will come like this okay now i'm just gonna paste it right here ctrl v and the placement are very similar but just a little bit um, change here and there I'm just gonna move this one here on the table and then the size is a little bit higher for my scene I put it right there and for this one it's almost good just, just a little bit oh B I hit B to select the box select okay box select move it back let's put it right here so this is just to decorate a little bit more like populate the scene a little bit more because if it's too empty it's gonna look fake okay 
not always but most of the time so and just move this one up as well so yeah the trick is just populate your scene a little bit more but not too much okay like if you do it too much then it's gonna look fake again so this is fine for me now i think that's all i did for the modeling i'm not gonna add this one for the final render anymore oh i remember this part um this part needs to be there as well so for this one if you go to bridge here bridge and then i download this worn metal workbench and this book as well okay this book as well i don't download this one so if you get that since i already download this one i'm just gonna copy this one as well okay and b i'm just gonna box select this one okay like that i will not take this one yeah control c control v so when you migrate it then it will come with it okay so i'm just gonna move it out of the frame or let's just get it smaller so it doesn't visible on my camera to be that obvious yeah like this is fine select this camera right now we see a lot of you know gray area and i don't like that so i'm just gonna go here viewport display and then passport out and i set all the way to one okay yeah i'm gonna hide the reference character so we just see that so i want the character to like already open okay already open just a little bit something like this is already open like this so go to the first frame shift and left arrow and then hit i and then uh just click on this rotation okay now she's opening it and then right there she's done opening it just right there but i don't want to open this door completely okay i'm just gonna leave it somewhere around here hit i i rotation now if we look at it see so look it from the camera view okay i mean yeah the camera view and if it looks fine from the camera then that's fine right now it's not because she's still opening and then she left it right there no no it's right there so i'm gonna move the keyframe to be somewhere around here now if we look at it yeah it's like that but if i play it back now she's opening it like that and it's a stop which is not realistic so i'm just gonna animate it back just a little bit okay r and then z and then let's just animate it back just a little bit okay i rotation now if we look at it if i play it back in real time it's gonna be like that and go back a little bit let's play it back once more like that and go back maybe this one need to be a little bit faster maybe slower yeah that's fine but this has to be right here so now we have to animate a candle okay uh, not the candle this is the lantern lantern so to do that that is why i have this reference character in the first place okay uh, just for the size reference i'm gonna add a candle not a candle a lantern right here it's gonna be the flame shift a light and then point light i'm gonna use this one let's just enable it for this one only okay because we can't see it anymore go to the first frame i and then get location and then go this is not getting inside yet and if you look at this one look at this side uh the the forearm now it's still in the light and right here we can see it's darkened right if you look at this part so meaning she entered the rooms right here right there so in this point then the can i mean the lantern needs to be inside the house right here 
make sure you key it uh, in the first frame okay so this is the automatic keying so i'm just going to enable this one for now make sure i lift this one to match this point now if we look at it it's not enter yet and then say start entering the point and then we can see it's start doing that right so that's how i calculate the distance it travel okay so i'm going to do this for the whole frame go here and then see swing on the right right there so i'm just going to grab this one and put it somewhere around here and look it from the front key it right there and then see swing to the left and then let's hide this building left and then see put it right there so i need to move this one and put it right there and grab it so i did it from the top view and the, the camera view okay and then after that she moves it again now if i look at the character i realize that she's not um, stop it at the last frame she st already stop it right here okay she already stop it right here so we we need the character to stop it right there let me see the character still walk so this is the farthest distance she has to cover okay so if I go to the reference the female and then I take that thing back so I need this one to stop it right here yeah like that because she's no longer uh, stepping forward okay let me reanimate it a little bit I don't even need that here she's not entering yet and then let me drag that one bit too far for me but I'm gonna keep it anyway move it one frame more put it here G and put it right there another frame G put it right here I'm gonna hide the reference so I can see a bit more clear Key it right there yeah and then she moved now i just need the the main character i don't need the reference i don't need the scene i'm just gonna animate it from here so she moves to the right and i can move this one to the right move to there i go to the last frame g and placed it here now we just have to fill the the blank uh the blank space okay here so move it right now this one move it right here this one move it right here move it right here it doesn't have to be very perfect you know if it roughly match the the match the movement then we can get away with it okay let me just adjust this one in the middle yeah I think that's good okay it's fine now that's the that's the lamp and then yeah that's all that needs to be animated in this scene if I alt H or take back all the scene if I play it back let's see I don't need the reference character for now if I play it back this is how it looks for now see it walks inside the room and then says carry a candle not a candle it's a lamp okay I think that's fine now let's start working on the, the lighting portion okay now if I enable EV, it looks like this. By the way, right now it's using CPU, okay? Which is very, very slow. Not like extremely slow, but 
it's gonna be way faster if I, was, if I use GPU but right now if I just click on this GPU compute then it's grayed out right so the reason is we need to enable the GPU in preference okay go to the preference and then go to the key map no go to the system and then click on optics okay you can save this one now it's gonna use your GPU instead of that CPU okay cool this is the lighting that we have the, the reason why now it lit up is because we add this one okay this is the lamp and then she walks inside okay and then I know that we also need to light up this part so let's start from the light okay I mean this is gonna be another lamp uh, hit tab and then select this loop to go to the edge mode and then select this too shift s cursor to select that now the cursor will snap right here shift a light point light okay now this i think is way too big for now so i'm gonna adjust that one i don't want like right now it's way too bright right right now it's way too bright so let's scale um, the size a little bit down so if I go to uh, light and then the radius is gonna set to a bit lower something like this is fine I guess and even the lamp see carries a bit too bright so it's gonna be like one only if she go that way it's a little bit brighter yeah something like this is fine Fine. Now we're gonna add translucency shader right here. Okay, I'm gonna move this one up, hit new, and then right now we need two materials for this one uh, for the lamp and for the handle. Okay, all this part. So to do that, we're gonna need to go to material properties, add another material slot, hit new. Okay, now nothing has happened because we don't assign anything yet okay so now if i change the color of this one it's still occupying the whole stuff right um we need a way to uh, assign it right here so we need to do that in edit mode okay go to edit mode uh, select uh, this one select the whole loop yeah right up to here now select the other materials okay and then if you hit assign then this is gonna assign different materials to that thing okay I'm gonna rename this one translucent now to get the translucent materials we're gonna need go to shader and then here we can find what is translucent yeah and then we can we just need to mix those two together okay go to shift a shader and then we're gonna mix those two together now we can see the translucent effects right I'm gonna change this one to something that looks like a candle and then here we can see the the mix between these two okay right now I don't want the, the white instead I want a black not exactly black I'm gonna put it something like this one and then maybe the the power I can increase I guess I said 20 way too bright so it's gonna be 10 is enough I'm just gonna increase decrease the radius to something like this is fine and I'm not I, I don't want this one to be yellow okay I mean I don't want it to be red so I'm just gonna change so the top one is this one and the bottom one is the, the candle okay the one that we just assigned so for this one, I'm gonna change this one to something that looks like a gold. Increase the metallic and decrease the roughness. So this one kind of looks like a gold. Look at this. And it doesn't even touch the touch the ground. I mean, touch the wall. So I'm just gonna move it back right there. And I think I need to darken it down a bit more. Something like this. Okay. 
first let's change the color of the wall right now it doesn't look good to me so go to bridge and then just download this one stain concrete floor and then make sure your exporting settings is set to blender okay and then just export it now it export to blender now how do we access that one so we can access that one by clicking on one of the uh, the objects that you want to apply that one to and then just click see worn this old wooden something nope it's not this one let's go to the name it's stain concrete okay stain concrete stain concrete so this is the materials and right now we are seeing at the normal which i don't like too much now we can preview the wall because right now it looks pretty stretched right at this part because we don't do any uv unwrapping okay so we're gonna quickly do that select the the mask go tap select everything using a and then hit u smart uv project so this will project it uh, the right way but if you still see some stretching effects so select the the mesh again and then control a and then scale and then do it again okay tap u smart uv project now this is gonna make it a bit more how it's supposed to be you know so this is the material that comes with um, bridge but the problem is that this normal is not connect to normal it's like connect to um, emission change that and this one goes to roughness okay that's one thing to, uh, to keep in mind but right now it looks like it's very very rough but yeah we can obviously tweak that later but right now I'm gonna keep it like this for now and I also think that I want the candle to be a bit lighter than that one so I'm gonna rename this one as um, the lantern light and I'm gonna make it yellow like that yeah and for this one um, the beam right here I think I use uh, this basketball worn basketball cord okay we can use this worn basketball code and then just export it again now let's select the worn basketball code which is this one okay I can just use that and if we look at this one now it's also looking very stretched right so hit control a and then hit apply the scale because look at this one this one needs to be one okay control a and then scale now it's one go to tab select everything u and then smart uv project okay now it will reduce that stretch but it's going the wrong direction right we need to change the uv go here uv editor go to tab to go to edit mode select the bottom one as well using a r and then 90 okay grab g to grab and then r to rotate okay i just use g to grab i'm just gonna scale this one a bit bigger but it will tile too much i don't want that up to this much is enough okay so i want to apply this one to all of the the wall here as well so i'm going to select all the wall i mean all the wooden beams this one as well yeah and then i'm going to select i'm going to lastly select the one that already has a uv control l and then copy uv map and then hit control l again and then link materials the reason why i did that first uh, link i mean copy um, uv map is because those stuff doesn't has uv as well okay that is why i did that and then if you find it this is a bit stretched then first control a and then scale then we have to do it again u smart uv project but i prefer the previous one yeah i'm gonna leave it like this i'm gonna change this one back to shader editor 
and then yeah, let's go back right now um i'm gonna hide the main character yeah and now the scene kind of looks really weird i know because we need to set the wall color okay right now i don't want it to be this one i want it to be a little bit um green okay so we can add green color right here so this is the original but i'm gonna change the color to whatever i want using converter color ramp okay I'm just gonna get this color ramp so this one what this one does is it's gonna take any output from here and then convert to black and white for now but now we can change the black and white value to any color we want so that's why i'm going to change right now to green something like this is fine a bit green maybe a bit brighter but yeah that's fine what about this green i can squeeze this one let me preview that So we can even we can even shrink the value, you know. But now it's way too bright for me. I'm don't I don't want to change this one to green. I'm gonna change it to black, but I'm gonna change this one to green. Okay, the white one. Select this one. Change this one to green. Yeah, something like that is fine. For me. And then I'm gonna change this one um, right now it has these materials I'm gonna select uh, green but right now everything is just turn green because this one is taken from the same cube you know so now we have to separate that it's really easy select the one that you need to separate the, you know the texture just click on oh you don't even need to do that for this one what i can do is i'm just gonna click on this one this is the worn basketball so i'm gonna use the same okay this is worn basketball yeah if you don't like the uv you can go always go here select everything you smart uv project okay this will project it again and I want to use the worn here as well. So W O R N. Use that. It does it doesn't look good because we don't clearly see it. And then I want to apply it here as well. Worn. Instead of like typing worn every time, you can just select all of them at once, and then click on the one that already has the materials. Just link the materials. Now we don't want this part to be wooden, of course. So hit three. What am I doing? So I'm gonna hit plus right here, and then new, and then I'm gonna rename this one to frame. And then I'm gonna go to edit mode, and then select this face. Go select that frame, and then assign it. Okay. I'm gonna do the same for here as well. Select this one plus, and I'm gonna take that frame. And then assign do it here as well plus take that frame and then tap select and then apply this is gonna be the picture and for the for the background right there we don't have anything right now yet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this yeah I'm gonna use this texture I know there's a guy right there but since it's gonna hide it anyway, so it's gonna be in front of it, so it's gonna hide. So this image is from Envato Element. I'm gonna give you a link for this one as well if you wanna use the exact same um, same image. So I'm gonna add using images plane add-on, Shift A, image, images plane. And I'm just gonna locate that one. I think it's this one, yeah. I'm gonna use that. Right now it's over there, but you can always right now it's I still enable that auto keying I don't need it for now so I'm just gonna edit I mean delete the key frame the scale is up now it's in the wrong order yeah I'm gonna pull this up 
Now let's add the floor. Okay, Shift A, Shift S first, and then cursor to world origin. Shift A, mesh, and then curve. Now I just get it up. I don't want it to be exactly aligned with the floor. I'm just gonna move it down a little bit. And it's just the floor. I'm gonna change the lighting right here because you know it doesn't look good. This part. So I'm gonna use different material for uh, the bottom. Hit three, select this loop plus. Right there. Uh, okay, up until here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay. Uh, hit plus and then new and then assign okay now we assign different materials on the bottom i just want this one to be green darker almost yellow something like this is fine yeah i'm gonna it doesn't look yellow to me too yellow is it yellow yeah, it does. Looks like a yellow. And this color is again, it's a bit too bright. So I'm going to darken it down to something like this. I can increase the saturation, but it doesn't look good. So. And the color of this light is white right now. That is why it doesn't look so right. Let me change it to something else. Something like this. And this one, like the brightness, I don't really like it. So let's go translucent and then increase the value of that translucency. Okay. And go to the first frame or somewhere around here. Look at the normal, it looks really weird. Maybe that's because of the roughness. If I select this one. So any models, I mean any materials that you import from Unreal Engine, I mean from Bridge, might look like this, okay? So always change back to this one and remove the clear code. Change this one to here, okay? Roughness. Set this one to the roughness. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, maybe this one has clear code as well this one if you look at this yeah normal reduce the clear code okay and the color of this wood doesn't look good to me at all uh, this one also has clear code so I just remove that change this one to roughness change this to normal do this for all the materials that you import from bridge okay um, now, if I increase this one, it doesn't matter so much. So, shift A color and then no, it's shift A converter color ramp. Okay, I'm gonna choose it manually again. I don't want to touch the black, but I, I want to touch the, the white part. Change it to something that looks like a, look like a oot. a bit too dark so I don't want to multiply it the roughness right now it looks like there's no roughness at all which doesn't look good and so right now if you like at our scene it's just way too dull there is no reflections there is no something that highlights you know they are just too dull so we need to fix that so to do that, um, if I scroll this one, let's start adding some reflection, even like all this place, okay? Um, this is way too dark. So I'm gonna select this part. Um, I will in I will enable the the noise, okay, for this one because right now it just looks way too noisy. Now I'm gonna select this um, this objects, and then I'm gonna decrease the roughness. If I decrease the roughness here, we can see it catch the, the light a little bit more. But I don't want that rough, especially on this one. So I'm going to set it to somewhere around point 
like this, but I'm gonna darken it a little bit more. Something like that, I'm gonna put it like that. So I'm gonna select this part, go to the first material, which is this one. And then right now, if we go closer, it just looks so dull. There is no reflection at all, especially right here. So I'm gonna reduce the reflection, first thing. But right now it just looks weird. Like the reflections is all over the place now. So now the first thing that we need to do is if you look at all the edges right here, it's just super sharp, right? Let's get re uh, let's remove that one first. Go to input and then click on bevel. And then I'm gonna connect this bevel to this normal. But before I do that, let's view this one first, okay? Control shift and left click. And now the bevel is way too big. If I set a point one way bigger 0.01 yeah 0.01 is look better but it's still a little bit big now if we preview that now we can see the edges are catching the light but it's still a way 0.005 maybe enough yeah now we can see this one if i remove this look at that it's just 100 percent sharp now I'm gonna go a little bit lower something like this is fine to me i can see the ends it looks really nice and this is gonna apply all over the all over the the mesh okay if i remove this one look at this part just completely sharp with the normal it looks fine i'm gonna increase this one to like point 35 yeah something like this is fine I think the lantern light intensity is a little bit too less because it doesn't light up the whole scene. I want to light the whole scene a bit uh, brighter and then I want the candle size to be like 0 0.01, 0 0.05 maybe, yeah, it's gonna be way bigger, way brighter, so it's gonna be like 10, 10 will be enough, yeah. The next thing is, look at this one as well, like super sharp, right? They never look good if they're like 100% sharp. That is why I'm going to add another uh, bevel node here, input, bevel, I'm going to set this in 0.01. If I preview it, nothing looks anything because I work in the wrong materials so I have to go to slot one first and then the slot one has already this normal if I preview it kind of looks something but yeah we can override this one or we can just simply add it I just want to override this one for now but it's not hard to add uh, those map together using vector add yeah, here vector map and we can just add those two together but for this one i'm just going to simply replace it okay um i don't need this one i'm just going to simply replace it with a bevel and then if i preview it right now see obviously it's way too much so 0.01 a little bit tighter if i look this part it's way too much 0.003 I think 0.03 looks good okay now if I connect this one to the normal and then remember this is a worn basketball okay if I look at that now it catches the light just a little bit if I remove this one remove it and it just look completely sharp so when I add this one then it catches the light but it just does a very bad job of catching that light so I'm gonna use color ramp to clamp uh, to adjust the roughness a little bit more so go to color ramp and here I'm gonna go here and then now if I squeeze the black value then we can see more of the roughness more of the roughness it's really hard to see if I 
zoom it out I'm going to increase the spec so that we can see a bit more prominent maybe I'll have to add a little bit of metallic just to see a little bit more here I can see it catch the light just a little bit but it's a little bit lesser than I want so this is the max it can catch the light looks like maybe we have to relight this part just a little bit in order to receive it more even this edge is receiving a little bit this one as well but if i connect this one to the roughness once more and we can see it also breaks the roughness as well I want to break a little bit look look at this part we need to break it up yeah I'm gonna increase the radius to be like like 0.5 here we can see the the reflection which looks good to me and then I can even see the reflection but if you look at this part it just looked like gloss doesn't look so realistic Go all the way here. I need to push this one back a bit more. Hmm. Let's put it something like this. And I know that I also open this door by default. Okay. Um, let me quickly add that. I'm gonna shift and right click right here and then I'm just gonna hit right click and then origin origin to 3d cursor right there now I'm just gonna rotate along Z and then open it up as well I'm not gonna open completely full it's gonna be something like here and I don't think we have a normal here as well so that's why it just looks so dull right now okay so let's add some roughness control over here as well right now this is controlling the whole stuff that is why it looks so dull white is uh rough okay and black is glossy that is why if the the, bl the more black that we have in the scene in this one then the rougher i mean the the glossier it gets okay we go here and then see it now we can see all the reflections okay yeah. right now it just looks so much better than the previous one like um, previously it is way too dark and there is no like point of contact I'm just gonna uh, change this one like right now it's a bit too bright it's still a little bit too bright especially uh, the, the first I mean this the pillow materials and also this part it's just too sharp again so we need to add a bevel as well bevel set us on the point oh one five set this one to the normal then yeah it's way too much i think point oh oh one five yeah point oh oh thirty five it's better yeah then use that one and then this part like the roughness needs to break okay this is the right material there is no roughness at all so i'm just gonna steal it from the the concrete okay so this is the concrete material this is ao the roughness i'm gonna use this albedo for the roughness i'm gonna control v uh, the same uh, the same albedo texture from the concrete converter color ramp and this color goes here this one goes to the roughness and now we can see a little bit of roughness breakage like that now it's completely rough yeah 
so um i will move this one up a little bit so yeah it, like i don't want to i don't want to set the roughness break up apart to be like super obvious okay that is why right now it's way too much look at that i'm just gonna slide all the way to front as well i'm gonna take the the, the darkest point and then just lift it up to something that is acceptable if you look at this part as well you can see the roughness breakage right here so we need that one i don't i don't want like a one roughness uh distribute all over the place okay so that's one thing and the entire scene is a little bit too warm yet Gonna change the lantern light to be a bit harsh, and this one go to emission. Right now, the normal looks really weird. If I go here and let's see the door. I think I already removed the normal geometry. Yeah, I already removed it, but it still looks weird. So I'm just gonna take the normal away. It looks better because uh, I think this one, the normal that comes with um, bridge, is a little bit too harsh. Okay, so that's another thing. And what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, one more thing is right now. I just want to move the lamp a little bit far away from from this wall Okay just Move it a little bit far away here yeah. Something like this is fine and I'm gonna work on the frame here tab I'm gonna select this part and go here go to the frame right now there is nothing right so i'm gonna use uh, this texture um, let me show it to you i'm gonna use this horse texture okay this also from envato element i'll give you a link as well so we can just use this one plug it right there now we can see something but i want to see the the horse okay not the flower so i'm just gonna hit you and then unwrap now i can see the horse but it's rotated so we have to edit the uv go to uv select everything rotate 90 yeah i hit r to rotate it okay and that's fine but right now it looks very good like it's look really really good i mean it looks new that's what i'm trying to say it looks really new so if i take the roughness doesn't even change okay let's make it a little bit um, grungy okay to do that I'm gonna steal this one as well again the concrete texture okay control V so I'm gonna blend these two together using shift a color mix RGB I'm gonna multiply maybe I don't know the thing that looks nice if I reduce the right now it looks like that i think this is better i just don't want to look so new okay and i will decrease the saturation as well i'm going to set the saturation and value to point fine so just drag these two together and set to point fine i think one is fine yeah one is fine now the two of them like the one on the bottom this part uh, if you go here on the UV, so this is not this one. Let's take the horse. So this is the part that we are looking at right now. If I hit G and place it somewhere else, then we see different photos. But you know, I just want to put it there, and then I mean just to make the the scene a little bit richer. Okay. So that's that, and. This one bothers me a little bit because I don't see any roughness right here. It just look a little bit fake to me. Go here, go to shader editor. 
I can see this. Oh, I don't use it, so that is why. I'm gonna use it so you can see a little bit of detail over there. Um, like this one. Yeah. Now we can see the texture over there. Here as well. See now I can see the the stretch over here. That doesn't look nice. So if I increase the roughness, yes. Now I can get the light right here. Yeah, it's better to me. But this part looks weird. Okay. Make it a little bit darker. Like that. That part is fine. Now if I scroll the timeline. Let's go enter the room, and then this part looks so bright. Maybe because of the light that interact is way too big, so let's reduce the light um, power to like one. I feel like one is enough to me. That are way too bright. Yeah, it's fine. And this part, I mean the color right now is way too bright. So let's darken it. Darken it even more. But I'm gonna increase the specular the roughness. Like you know, we can see right here. The roughness is fine to me. But if I increase it, you can see a lot of, a lot more detail. Yeah. Okay, that's another thing. color of this one I don't really like it so I'm just gonna um, edit this one separately not the frame the worn basketball for this one it doesn't look good so just click on this number so this is gonna create like separate materials for that one if you don't create that one I mean if you don't click on that one then if you make any changes here then it's gonna change on the whole wooden um, texture so we don't want that that is why I click that now, if I go back this one, because I feel like it looks a little bit better when it become uh, lighter. So I want to use it here as well. The worn basketball, worn basketball here. Control L, link materials. Now they become one. And another thing that I add for the final render is I go here, bridge, and I export this rough brick wall. Okay, let's export this one again. So I want to blend the brick with this texture, okay, this wall texture. So what I did is I add another material slot right here and then search for that brick, which is this one. I'm not gonna use it, I'm not gonna assign any materials, but I wanna copy up till here, control C, go back to slot one, or I can go back from here. I can just control V, and then I'm gonna grab it down here. As always, like this normal goes to the wrong socket, so I'll just pull this one, spec here, and the color code, color code, yeah. Now if I preview this one, 
so this is the brick and it's way too big right i'm gonna set this to 0 0.5 still way too big 0.25 still way too big 0.2 about 0.2 is fine but the rotation is wrong so i'm gonna rotate along y90 no it's not y i think it's z90 yeah it's along z90 so i'm gonna blend this one with the one that i previously made which is this one okay so to blend these two together i'm gonna use a mask and for the mask i'm gonna use mask grave okay this one so i'm gonna we need to adjust the scale and the luminosity so for the scale gonna make it pretty big somewhere around here on oh, some of the part and then I just want to control T and then I'm just gonna um, move around I'm just gonna move Y let's put it somewhere right here yeah and then just let's move around you know uh, if you don't see uh, the good position now I'm going to use uh, color ramp, converter, color ramp to squeeze the value a little bit. Right now it's just way to fade, you know. Let's move this one up, somewhere around here, down as well. Now we're going to use this one to mask out um, the black and white value. So instead of black, then I'm going to use this one. And then instead of white, I'm going to use the brick, okay. So we need to mix those two together using mix shader here. Mix shader. I'm gonna move this one up. I'm gonna need this one on the fact. Fact is like a mask, okay? And then I'm gonna grab this one down, put it right here. Take this one, put it down. So now we can see a break right here, and this part is fine because if you look at the texture, the blender. So instead of white, we're going to see the bottom, okay? So we can adjust how they blend by using this one. You can even reverse it, but I don't like to reverse it. I like it this way. Okay. Good. Yeah. I think it's fine. I just don't uh, satisfy with the way this one looks. I think it's the slot number two. I'm going to change it a little bit to something like almost yellow. Yeah, maybe like that. It's fine. So it's more of like that if I go to 190 something. Yeah. I think the exterior light is a bit too bright, right? So I'm gonna darken it down using color and then what is it? Fuel saturation. I'm just gonna reduce the value to like 0.5, maybe like 0.1. Nope, 0.5 is fine. You can always darken this down in After uh, Effects. So it's coming and then see we interact with the scene. Okay. Now we need one more thing, which is the glass right there. Right now there's no it looks like there's no glass, right? So the way I'm gonna add a glass is what is it? Okay. Go to the first frame and then I'm gonna shift and right click right here. Shift A mesh. I'm gonna scale it down. Rotate X90. Move it down. Move it down. Rotate X. I mean, it's rotate Z. Yeah. Change this one to normal. Move it back. I'm gonna scale this one along Y. Scale this one along X. Now this is gonna be used for the glass, but right now we just need to use uh, a glass, an actual glass shader for this one.
So let me use that. I'm going to hit new. I'm just going to rename this one as glass. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this one. Shift S. Shift S is the switch. Okay. I go to glass. Now it becomes glass. If I go like that, it's very not clear. Oh, because I have to parent this one to here. Okay. So select the glass first and then select the door. I'm going to control P and then object keep transform. Okay. Now, if I move, then the glass will move along. But right now, it's like obviously way too reflective, right? So, I'm going to use um, the wall texture again, uh, which is, yeah, this one. Albedo, control C, select the glass, control V, yeah. I select the right one. Because right now, we need to break uh, this one. Set it right there, see right here. We can see this is like a little bit more diffuse. Shift S, converter, color ramp. I just want to increase this part so it's um, right now it's kinda looks good, I would say. But we can even increase a little bit more grungy like this. We go all the way then it's gonna look super grunge maybe I don't want that up here we can control like darkest value let's make, let's make it something like this right yeah something like that yeah let's just gonna open that we can use this one for the gloss So this is going to be the base, okay, looks very similar. So now if we look at the original blend file that I um, used for the final one, which is this one. Now if I compare from side to side, hmm. okay the first thing is The first thing that we notice right away is that the final scene looks quite brighter than the one that I have right now, especially this part. So meaning I'll just have to increase and even this part looks not, it doesn't look exactly the same, but yeah. Um, I spent another like uh, five hours to make the scene a bit more beautiful. Right now, uh, all the lighting and everything, we just spent like, I think, uh, 45 minutes. So, um, spend a little bit more time like um, adjusting all the lights, but right now we're not done yet. So I'm just giving a comparison between those two. Uh, right now, I feel like this part needs to be a little bit lighter. So what we can do is, um, I'm gonna take this one down. If we need like this part to be a bit lighter, but when she come, yeah, when she enters the room, then yeah, it's lighten up. Um, and another thing is we can just increase the uh, the power to like two, which will lighten up obviously. I think that's it for um, for the light part. And now there's gonna be another thing that needs to be done. If I take the reference character here. So we need uh, we need to know exactly when this is gonna stand. So right now she's standing right here, right? So I'm gonna hide. No, I'm not gonna hide. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna take the main character and then I'm gonna duplicate this one. Shift D and then move it exactly right here. We're gonna use this one like it's gonna be really important. But if you don't understand the reason of why I did this, just stick to it, you'll understand. So I'm gonna move this one down here. I just need to match this part right there. So I'm gonna shift right click here. And then remember, see it's right here. Change this one to 3D cursor, then I'm gonna scan it down. If you look at this one, I scale it down. I'm gonna hide the reference character for now. Just 
scale it down to roughly match the size right now it looks kind of the same right so when I animate the camera then we can see exactly where it is now I'm gonna apply the, the constraint first before I animate uh, the, the camera now we have two character uh, because we need this one for the um, character location reference okay our main character location reference and then I'm gonna uh, apply this one so now this one like uh, the frame is already applied and no, I'm not I'm, I'm start gonna animate the, that character okay so I'm gonna hit I and then I'm gonna hit location and then rotation and then I'm gonna move this one to all the way here I'm gonna move it on this side something like this maybe that's too much I'm gonna put it right here location rotation and then the camera is animated look at that now you want to pull it down so for this one I'm gonna move it slightly head something like this I think I move it way too far let's go from the beginning I'm gonna move it from here somewhere around here and I hit I location rotation and then it's gonna animate and then it's gonna land it here and then go almost to the last frame I go down and then I'm gonna concentrate on the book let's put it right here somewhere around here is fine yeah I'm gonna hit I, location and rotation. Yeah, something like that is fine. But it looks like it's a way too much, so I'm just gonna land it right there. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm gonna arrange the the books. So this is just uh, just an image texture that has spider web in it, okay? The setup is pretty simple it's just the uh, uh, image texture and I take uh, there is an alpha uh, let's just type for um, spider web and then yeah I just use that one nothing fancy I'm just gonna move this one aside just put it right here this one as well like that yeah that's how I did it and now if we see this part See, it's way too dark, right? That is why I add another light just to light up uh, this part. Light and then area light, okay? I'm gonna rotate along my 90, move it back a little bit. Right now, I think the size of the light is way, way too big. Make it smaller so that we can, we can concentrate on there but I, I also want to make sure that it doesn't affect uh, the, the, the scene okay that's why I have to rotate along Z just to affect the books and maybe the jar like that and I'm gonna change the color to something like yellow yeah and I think this part is a little bit um, brighter than I want so I'm just gonna pull this back put it somewhere around here yeah and if you think that like all this part is a bit too rough I mean to shine then you can go back to the texture and make sure the clear code is not enabled yeah that's pretty good now I need to shift the focus as well so click on the camera and then from here to here we shift the, the focal length right so we over here go to a uh, viewport and then check on the limits and if you enable a depth of fill here we can see the depth of fill is right there so up until here we need a depth of fill to be focused on right here i'm going to animate it and then on the first light right right here 
we need to focus here I'm gonna animate it again so the focus is coming right there and then we need to focus it on the book so I just go even way shallower connect it to the book right here let's connect it to the book and then keyframed it again okay so just come inside and then see look at that yeah yeah let's play back once so it's just gonna open it don't worry we, we're only gonna see one of them she opened the door she look around and then we can concentrate to the the book right okay nice and i think when i look at this one see it's way too bright right it's way way too bright we don't need that we don't need to be that bright so it's going to be like one one is way too less two so it's going to be like five five is enough for me so yeah and I don't want um, our character to, to be visible on the final render so I'm just gonna select that one go to here object properties go to visibility and then uncheck that one do the same here as well uncheck the visibility and then we don't need the reference character the main character okay that's pretty much for the scene setup obviously uh, we can't use this one because like you have to I don't want to visible on the glossy as well maybe transmission yeah untick the transmission as well so it doesn't look I mean we can't see it right there okay so for the render settings what we need to do is we need to go to the pass and then I will enable crypto mat these two um, we're gonna use this one as after effects and then you will understand exactly why do we do we click both of them and for the uh, for this one I'm gonna add ambient occlusion for the data I don't need pretty much anything maybe the position I'm gonna enable the mist okay now once we enable the mist then if we go to the world then we can see the mist pass if we want to preview the mist and we can go here combine change to mist so this is the mist pass in order to preview it in the viewport what we need to do is click on the camera and then go to the yeah the camera and then viewport enable the mist now the mist start from here and then ends up right there right so we lost all this data from the front so we have to pull the mist pass back to something like this and the far is way too far there's no use of that so I'm just gonna move it somewhere around here so in case we need that okay it's gonna be combined so mostly I use like a crypto mat and I just do all the color change or all the stuff inside crypto mat okay now you can save oh I've never saved this one. Oh shit um, a blend file dark so this is shot for I'm just gonna save this one as tutorial and then uh, in order to export all the paths then what we need to do is we need to go to the output and then change this one I like the location change your location then change this one to open EXR multilayer full full change this to none and enable this preview then we're almost good to go so uh, once you're done with this one then you can render it out okay you can render this out uh, by default settings I don't change any of them uh, I enable the denoise and then yeah I don't change anything okay guys so I just render it out like this and then I'm gonna make it look better in looks better in After Effects okay so that's 
And there's one more thing that needs to be done, which is uh, I'm going to move all this one in one layer. I'm just going to call it miscellaneous. Yeah. Now we need to set up one more thing, which I'm going to right click here, Shift A, Mesh Plane. We need this plane. Uh, we don't need anything, even the mist. We just need this one. Rotate Z90, no X90. And then um, I'm going to duplicate the light. I mean, I'm going to duplicate the camera, Shift D. Okay, move it outside and disable the mist again. So for this one, I will disable um, the depth of field. And then I will also enable the film and then make it transparent, okay? So this one, I'm gonna give it the materials and then I'm gonna give it a mischief materials. Let's make it white. Maybe this is too big make it smaller so the reason why I did this is because I need to know the position of our character so if you look at this one this is this is like stand still till here through the whole frame if I just enable the main character can we see it oh. look at this so they stay at like roughly the same place now we know roughly where uh, the character stands okay because when I pull the camera lower right there then we need to uh, animate the animate the character based on the camera animation okay you will understand this one better uh, once we are in After Effects so just keep that in mind we need the location reference uh, for this one that is why I add this one and then we're going to use this one to translate our character okay so it's this one um, now we render this one out separately okay this one needs to be separate and then just hide everything and render this one separate so there are two i don't need reference character so there are two render that needs to be done okay which is like this final render and then this plane hide everything and then this plane okay I'm not gonna re-render uh, again uh, for this one because I've already rendered it out um, it took me like uh, four to six hours to roughly four to six hours to render the whole frame it's four how many frames four forty five frames okay now we are done with uh, whatever needs to be done in um, inside blender I think the process okay yeah we are done so now let's jump back to After Effects so this is where we are left off now we're gonna start comping okay uh, first we need to create I mean we need to put this one inside a group so here um, in After Effects they call it pre-comp okay when you put it inside a group so control shift and C is a shortcut key and this mm. one is gonna be character key I'm gonna move all attributes to the new comp so here we have the character key still the same but it's just grouped inside one one thing okay now I'm gonna take the render okay um, like I said I am not gonna re-render this one I'm gonna render my scene okay which is this one actually it's already rendered so yeah I'm, not, I'm just saying I'm not gonna re-render the stuff let's say you're done with the render then all you have to do is go to your shot which is this one I render the XR and JPEG so we have to import both uh, set one just import it right here now I'm gonna make sure that uh, the FPS is not 25 okay right click interpolate main and then set this one to 29.97 which is the FPS of the actual footage okay now just drag and drop it right here so the reason why we see this one is because the size of the comp if you right click and component settings 
is 4K and then we render it out at um, yeah 1080p so we have to match that one I don't want to comp it in 4K instead I want to scale it down so it's gonna be 824 and the top is 1920 okay now if we do that our character is now extremely big so I'm gonna scale this down you know, move it like that yeah okay now I'm gonna I'm just gonna roughly match the match the size of our 3d scene okay because I already add I already placed all the reference here inside this scene I don't need the reference character I go to the first frame first frame and yeah I'm just gonna roughly match that the size is pretty similar let's not worry too much about um, this part for now I'm just gonna let it go there just gonna move inside and now let's match the color okay first thing is matching the color we're gonna need lumetri and I'm gonna drag this down and put it right here so first is the temperature okay the temperature is like it's way too different way 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 different so I'm gonna increase the temperature and then I'm gonna tint it a little bit towards green temperature yeah now we can already see that this is way too bright right so we have to decrease the curve just decrease the curve Right now, I need to increase the highlight because I feel like this part is a bit too dark. So increase the white. But I'm gonna decrease the shadow. Yeah. Hmm. Now if we look at the darkest black, which is this one and this one, it's pretty similar, right? this part this part maybe you, I can go a little bit darker I'm just gonna take this one slide towards right but make sure we don't go darker than the CGI um, render okay in terms of black and white there's no white in this scene so we can go this way but like the brightest this one and this one needs to be like roughly the similar as well so yeah, this is the brightest point. So this is the brightest, so I'll just take the white down. It's fine. Yeah. I'm gonna go overall darker. Like that. Hmm. Just gonna walk inside. Let's adjust the temperature a little bit more. If I do it like this, it's obviously way too much. So we don't need like a lot of uh, settings to tweak it because um, the setup of the scene is like it's fair. I mean, I set up in a way that it will look uh, similar in terms of color toning and everything. That's why I don't have to tweak a lot of settings. But right now, it's just a little bit too bright. It has to be something like this. Let's make it a bit darker, you know? Yeah. Now let's try to fix this part. So, the reason why we export the EXR is because of this one, okay? I'll just take the EXR and I'm gonna drop it right here, top of that. So once I do that, everything now become dark because we need to extract those data because right now this EXR is full of data and right now After Effects doesn't know exactly which uh, path to take it out, okay? First, go 
after I'll go to effects and then go to 3d channel and then we're gonna need to use a crypto mat okay once you click on that then just wait for it Let's just wait for a little bit longer okay now we come um, we're gonna use this one as a crypto mat so this right now if you look at the layer click on this one now my PC got extremely slow but yeah it's gonna be fine right now it sets to uh, materials okay so if you look at this one um, this one look at the the frame this this and this one are using the same materials that is why when i click on one of them it's gonna um, select all of them at once but if i change the layer from materials to object and then now they no longer uh, the same um, materials i mean the same group now but yeah i cannot set the select just the frame anymore so that is why sometimes we need both of them so i just click on both of them okay so for this purpose, I need this one. Uh, also, right now, if we look at this one, this is sharing the same, uh, the same material. So I don't need that. Instead, I need to go to object, and then if I can now click on just this part, which is really really good. But the problem that you're gonna face when you use this one is because XR is extremely heavy. Okay, like if I try to scroll. It barely happens then the loading time is gonna be like let's see four point six I mean I mean six point forty one seconds to render one frame I mean to preview one frame which is gonna take you a lot of time okay because like if you try to uh, comp it using EXR so the best way of doing this one is set this one to matte only and this is gonna turn everything to black and white yeah now I can go and render just this one okay uh, if I go to the first frame so hit control M and then change uh, I'm going to the control M and then change the output to um, PNG or you can set it to anything let's set it to PNG for now okay I'm gonna say to PNG I'm not gonna resize it okay and then I'm just gonna put this one inside um, shot for crypto mat right now I already render this one out so this is the door here here you can see uh, but this time I render it with JPEG so it doesn't matter that much so you can render this one uh, Separately here and then hit render. Okay, so if you do that Then uh, you're gonna find let me show you Something that looks like this if I go to door. Yeah, look like this. Okay, so if you render right now, this is um JPEG and it's really um, light when it comes to performance okay now just render this one first okay don't comp directly with EXR then you hide this one now every come everything just becomes light again okay what you're gonna do is oh I, th I forget I need to change this one as well to main this is gonna be 29.97 okay now let's re-import different um, render shot for and then crypto mat let's import the door and this one also needs to be interpret for this 29.97 okay so let's rename this one as door okay now we can drop it this one and use it instead of um, EXR okay so right now we see this one how do we actually use it so to use it just enable that one this is luminance okay like if you, if you think about it in terms of luminance white is completely one and then zero is completely zero uh, black so I'm gonna use this white to cut out this part 
the character so this is like fact in blender okay the mask in blender we're gonna use this mask okay so I'm gonna uh, select the character and then I'm gonna change this one to Luma inverted so once I do that um, this is the door that like this one it's gonna use by the lower layer as a mask and then whenever it sees the white then this one will become transparent look at that you understand so this is the map let me show you the map this is the map and whenever we see the black then we're gonna see the the character key whenever we see the white then all the white parts are gonna become transparent okay that is why we see it like this now when it open it's like it's behind it but right now yeah we can see this one so this one is also needs to be behind the door so what I did for this one is I make a group for this one okay control shift she and then this is the door hit okay so I group this one first then I go inside that one then if I go here then I just add a mask uh, rectangle tools just click this one and then select all the way to here and then click on this one and then you have to enable this fill hit OK and then we need to uh, we need to animate this one hit P to animate the position go here go to the first and then right there I don't think we even need to animate it okay I think we can just leave it like that now if I hit tab okay and then just go to the main master and then here this is what we see now the C is no longer penetrated because if you look at this one now these also become white so like I said on whenever um, this lower layer sees white then that's gonna turn into alpha okay that's what we don't see right there we see some glitch So the reason why we see that glitch is because I don't render out uh, the whole sequence, okay? Because right here, I want the character to move actually beyond that right here. Yeah. Like that, yeah. So that's the trick. And then I'm gonna use the same thing for the bottom as well. But see right now, when we animate the camera down like this and then C also keeps animated down because we, we don't match the camera animation yet that is why we render out that uh, circles okay I mean that rectangle so camera mostly if I import that and change this one interpolate to uh, 29.97 hit OK which one is it? Okay, this is it. Camera motion. This is going to be really, really important if I put it right here. Um, so this is moving along with that camera motion. Look at that. So what we need to do is um, we need to track this motion, okay? Like, what, uh, like the way I did it for the footage, like I stabilized. But this time it's going to be track motion. I'm going to increase this one. I'm going to increase this size just to roughly cover this space. Yeah. And let's search here. So just click on analyze forward. So this is going to track that uh, rectangle. Now once we're done with the tracking, we have to transfer the data to somewhere else, okay? So that somewhere else is gonna be, in this case, null, okay? This is just an empty, and I'm gonna transfer this data to right here, okay? So to do that, 
just click on edit target and then the layer is going to be the null okay now apply and it's going to apply the uh, x and y so now all this checking data has been transferred to this one now i can close this one if i preview this one look at that the null is exactly following that rectangle so what we can do is i can hide this one i don't need the camera motion anymore i can select the character and then if i take this one and then parent to the null now if i scroll and then when the camera moves down C also moves up look at that but the only problem is this is not being occluded by this one yet so to fix this one it's really easy it's gonna be exactly the same as the one that we did for the door I'm gonna put this one again uh, like this now it's gonna turn black again let's wait for it yeah now go to effects make sure you select dxr go to effects 3d channel crypto mat let's just wait for it so like i said crypto mat just take up a lot of time okay so that, that is why we just have to pre-render everything go to crypto mat and select this book wait for it wait for it select the table as well change this one to mat only now if we use this one instead of the door and if i hide this one look at that now c is occluded by the books right so we just uh, have to connect these two um yeah both of them together uh, we can simply um group them together or i can Take this one, Control X. I can cut it and put it inside this folder. Okay, I mean this group. Then it's gonna work the same. Okay, but again, we need to pre-render this one because if we don't do that, I think four four five is the actual frame. Yeah, four four five till four four five because this one needs to go till there. So what I'm saying is we need to pre-render this one as well, okay? Otherwise, it's not going to work because it's take extremely too long. But the good news is we don't have to pre-render the whole sequence. If I change this one to no track map for now. Look at that. So the book starts to appear from here. Here. So I just have to render it from uh three four six till the final okay i mean till the uh, last frame so i'm just gonna pre-render this one if i go inside door uh three four six three four six yeah i just need to pre-render it from here so i'm just gonna take this one and then drag it all the way here and then pre-render this part okay so this is going to save me a lot of time if i just do that so let's say i've already rendered this out you can render this one with um, jpeg or png like i said um, as you wish okay now i'm going to import i'm going to show you first um, the pre-render not this one not the door this is the book where is the book the table so this is the pre-render is coming like that so yeah now this is pretty light so that after effect can handle it so i'm just gonna double click here again here out and just get that crypto map pass okay the table click on this one import the xr yeah make sure this is set to uh 29.97 Okay, everything is 29.97 so I'm just gonna drag this one and drop it right here look at that it's exactly the same length right not exactly but yeah now we can remove the XR now we have both look at that we don't have anything here but we have that 
we have this now if I go one up and then we can use this one as Luma man nope is the inverse Luma inverted now this is occluded by the book but the problem here is C is not yet blurred right so we just have to blur the character go to effects and then blur I mean lens blur uh, we need to add the camera lens blur here um, I'm just gonna collapse this one so yeah for the lens blur if you look at how we animate this one um, the animation starts from if I go to camera and then I select the camera where is it okay it's this one um, if I look at this one so here we can see that the the focus plane is shifting but I keep focus on the character so we don't have to worry too much about it and then here it stop and then suddenly from three three eight two yeah this point four one seven so what I need to do is from three three eight I'm just gonna set the blur radius to like one I think it's still too blur let me see in full yeah, I think I'm gonna blur it like two because I cannot make it completely sharp this one since the rest of the scene is not sharp maybe like four four is way too blur now so maybe three yeah I'm gonna set to something like three so it's three three eight and I just have to blur the radius I'm gonna hit U and then the last frame is like I said it's 418 go to 418 418 and then here it needs to blur like the background okay so I'm gonna blur this one it's way too blur now Yeah, something like this is fine. Okay, and then instead of hexagon, I'm just gonna make it like almost circle. Yeah, like that. In the middle, we're gonna see this. Yeah. now what we need to do is we need to do the the overall cc okay so once we are done with that uh we're gonna need new adjustment layer and it's just gonna walk inside already so i'm gonna um, do the color correction here in this frame go to adjustment layer um uh, not, not the CC blur, it has to be Lumetri, okay? Oh, there you go. Just take this Lumetri. Now, before that, I'm gonna use Glow. And then I'm gonna rename this one to Glow. Just take the Glow and drop it right here. Now, decrease the radius. And then, I mean, decrease the threshold to like 30 increase the radius okay increase the radius to something like big number something like this that's the first and then the next thing is i'm gonna i need to exclude this one as well look at this but for the tutorial if you look at this one i don't have it because like i feel like uh even if I don't have it, it looks good. So, but the 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 um, you know the process is still the same. I just need this one, um, this part cut out, and then use it. You know, 
So I already have that. If you look at my pillar, so this is the pillar 252. It starts from 252. So I already rendered it one. So I'm gonna take that again. Uh, pillar 252 and just make sure it's 29.97 I'm gonna draw and then I'm just gonna put it right here inside this one and then I'm gonna what happened okay two five two so I just need to go to two five two and then place it right here. Yeah. Yeah. So if we look at that, now so now it's beneath that. Yeah, that's how I do it. So there's another thing. I add glue. Still not occluded right here, it's occluded right there. So I just have to render this one just before this one, okay? Uh, don't worry about this one because um, I just have to render this one before that. Hmm. It's fine. But yeah, you get the idea. I just have to render it out. This part. Um, now if I go here on the first frame like now we can see like it's extremely extremely exposed right so uh, what we need to do is I need to go to character and then I need to go here I will decrease this one first I need to key um, this tone okay I need to keyframe this tone but I want the looks from like when she enters the room and I kind of look like the way it looks so instead of full let's say to like quarter can be a little bit faster okay I'm gonna leave it right there and then I'm gonna key out um, the white shadow highlight okay if I hit U then I can see what other keyframe that I created now I go to like the brightest point looks like I need to move this one the character to the left a little bit because it needs to be something like this yeah um, anyway right now it's extremely um, bright so I just need to darken the white let's set this one to zero still looks bright to me so I just take the highlight as well and then I also need to key the temperature because I feel like the temperature, the outside is way too bright. But I'm gonna take this two and put it right there because I already want the kind of looks that it gives me right there. I'm gonna make it a little bit less warmer here. Something like this. I guess it's fine. Yeah. Now we can do the overall CC here. Um, control Alt Y. You can hit Control Alt Y or right click New and then Adjustment Layer. So for this one, I'm gonna add um, overall CC. So this is gonna be Lumetri right here. Lumetri and just put it right there 
now like i said it's gonna control the overall so i'm just gonna make it a little bit darker the overall scene is like a little bit too bright for me darken it down something like this is fine yeah just go to at least half this is half stop up a little bit and then I'm gonna change the color wheel to be a little bit different color that's too much let's go darker Give a little bit of blue right there. And I'm going to adjust the mid tone to be something like this. I don't want to overdo it because right now it just looks like everything just washed out. Okay. bit of warmth okay let's go to the overall temperature by make it a little bit colder slide to the right yeah now what I can do is CC I'm go back to the creative and then faded film. I'm gonna give it like 10. Maybe like two will be enough. I'm gonna sharpen like 10. Right now there is no like it's completely free of noise, that's why it looks kind of plasticky, okay? Control Alt Y. This is a new adjustment layer, so I'm just gonna add noise on top of this one. So it's gonna be noise. Gonna keep noise like 10%, and I'm gonna reduce noise, I mean the color noise, and then reduce this down to like 20% only, maybe 30. Uh, I, I think it's a bit too much, but if I look it from full view, yeah, it's kind of okay without the noise, it just looks so clean. 50%, even 50%, I can barely see it. No, let's not get the grid. <laughs> yeah. And then after this one, uh, what we can do is uh, when C is outside, so I'm just gonna um, duplicate this one, both of them, Shift D. I mean control D and then this part for this part I want to go a little bit darker okay go to the this one for this one I'm not gonna key it out okay so this is gonna be the shadow part okay so go even darker I think I'm gonna leave it like that this part but I'm gonna take the white down extremely dark like that so what I can do is I will just grab this one and then I just key out this part out make sure you select the, the one that you wanna mask it okay otherwise it's just gonna create a shape key out of that I'm just selecting that part and then let's hold on. Move it up, move it up, move it up. This part like that is fine. Now 
Maybe even darker. Yeah, it'll be something that dark. Now, if I click on this one so that we can hide the mask, hit F, say to like 50. So now we can see that C is interacting way much better, you know? Look at that. Yeah, maybe it's way too dark, so let's set to minus. Yeah, and then once he enters the room, then we can animate that mask away. Um, let me select that again. It's the top one. Select it. Select here. Hit M. And then I need this one. Just still before she entered the room right here okay somewhere around here i'm gonna put it here and while c is on the door it's gonna be right there moved and i don't want it to be right there i want it to be somewhere around here because you know she's not gonna interact too much with the door anymore and then right here i just need this guy to leave it somewhere around here that's fine yeah if we don't see the if we don't see the character then yeah it's not it's not gonna have any impact on it anymore it's like that so this part i feel like this part is a bit too bright okay that is why I think so I'm just gonna rename this one uh, character shadow and then I will just mask all this part all this part all this part right here and then I can just hit F to give the feather yeah Without it, with it. Right now, it just looks so. Um, way too darker than I expected. So, you can go to the mask here, to the second mask, right? So, I'm just gonna need the opacity to be a little bit lower, to be like 60%. It's fine for me. She walks in and she so this part, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I think you understand the process, you know. Right now, like if you wanna adjust, like um, specifically, let's say you need to make changes and this one like you think um this i think this is a little bit too dark then what you can do is you're gonna need the exr again just put it here go to effect 3d crypto mat just select the one that you want to edit i'm gonna put this one to quarter for now click on the crypto mat effects and you can click it Change this to Luma Mat. Now you're gonna pre-render this one, okay? First, you need to pre-render this one. Otherwise, it's just gonna take you way too long. So you're gonna duplicate this one, the base layer, and then you're gonna put it right there. So the EXR, I mean the 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 Crypto Mat always needs to be on top of what you try to edit, okay? Select this one and set this one to Luma Mat. Uh, let's just wait for it. So right now it looks like nothing happens. I'm gonna uh, get rid of the noise. Yeah, looks like nothing happens. But actually, what happens is, uh, it if I solo this one out, then here we can clearly see that it's just a pillar, right? 
now if I go here to Luma Luma tree and then if I just drop this one right here and make any adjustment right here so this will affect just that part now you know you can make so much tweak in this settings using these settings like if you want to change the color just take hue and then hue and saturation and then just you know change the color you can also like colorized and then use any color you want to get that so that's pretty much uh, what you're gonna need uh, to compose like this kind of shot if it's like very specific then you you can add uh, ambient occlusion pass let me quickly show you how to do that as well take this one again DXR put it here this time I'm not gonna use EXR I'm, I mean I'm not gonna use cryptomat I'm just gonna use extractor and then uh, let's go inside this layer and then let's extract the ambient occlusion if I just preview that so this is the ambient occlusion um, you set this one to multiply yeah if you set that now let's take lumetri let's just take curve and take curve and then if I move this one aside see this um, AO right now the samples is way way too low like I rather it like 200 samples okay that is why it doesn't look good at all but if you render it with like higher um, higher samples then it's gonna be like this part will not look this choppy by the way if I change it to full let's see but it's gonna yeah still looks a little bit choppy but if you want to increase the the crevices part especially like all the crevices part then if you multiply it and then just change the opacity down to like 20 then this will help you make your scene a bit more um how do i say it? i give it gives a little bit more depth to the scene right now if i unhide it this is how it looks if i hide it if i make it visible see it just makes everything more contrast okay like it will make the ambient part like the connection between this and this one a little bit darker that's why we can see a bit more depth to the scene okay there's also something really useful and then another thing I'm just gonna rename this one AL and then another thing is just control D to duplicate it and then I'm gonna take it for this one I'm gonna take the missed pause okay I'm not gonna set it to multiply I'm gonna set it to screen for now and then we I need to change the opacity all the way to like 10 maybe if I change it to overlay yeah so when I change it to overlay then you know the front part now become darker because if you if you because if you look at the mesh I mean if you look at the actual thing if I say to 100 see now you can see like the front part are now becomes way darker that makes I mean that gives the scene a bit more depth okay so these are really something that uh, really important to know if you want to create a lot of depth to your scene just not using the the, um, the regular depth of field okay right now I feel like the, the character is a bit uh, still a little bit too bright so I'm going back to the character key which is the bottom one oh no yeah it's the bottom one go to curve I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit more but yeah you get the idea so these are all the tips that I use to create um, the final scene that we see right here let me pull it back yeah this one so it looks like I changed the color wheel a little bit here nope 
yeah I change the color wheel a little bit here to a bit more um, sign color but other than that it looks very similar CC I think I change this one to a little bit more something like this color yeah something like this and then highlight I think I say to something like warm the final one but maybe like the warmer tone is not something that you are looking for I can always go to like uh, different directions yeah something like this so you get the idea right so this is what I did for my scene right now we are looking at her and then she's looking for something and then for the next scene she's gonna find it okay so like I said this is like a series and then I hope by Monday I can release that next video and just wait for a little bit more and then we're gonna see the detail uh, VFX breakdown as well and then yeah so I think this is it and I'll see you in the next one bye bye